Hello everyone and welcome to the weird, scary and horrible parts of humanity. Today we are exploring Hirokai Hidaka, who was a Japanese serial killer who went on a murdering rampage over six months in 1996. Born in Mirazaki, the capital of Miyazaki Prefecture in April 1962, Hidaka was the youngest of three children with his parents investing in properties. During elementary and high school he played softball and baseball, serving as the captain of the baseball team. Initially he did very well at school, including maintaining the highest grade in his class in high school in Japanese history as well as being an all-rounder in sports and an honor student. However, he had a cold relationship with his parents, who were generally unfriendly towards him as the youngest of their three children. Graduating from high school in March 1981, he wanted to become a teacher or a civil servant but failed to gain entrance into his preferred university the University of Tosokuba in Tosokuba, Ibaraki. The University of Tosokuba is one of the most prestigious universities in Japan and is ranked as the 34th best university in Asia by the Times Higher Education World University Rankings in 2021. Instead, he entered the University of Fukuoka studying law, a far less prestigious university which is ranked between 141 and 150 in Japan by the Times Higher Education World University Rankings in 2021. He was arrogant towards his university classmates, believing that he was superior and should have been at the University of Tosukuba and also lost contact with friends from high school and stopped attending alumni events. Four years and two months after commencing his studies at the University of Fukuoka, he dropped out, having not paid his tuition fees. He then took a temporary job at Miyazaki City Hall, the main government building in Miyazaki. Increasingly depressed, he began borrowing money, drinking excessively, and frequented prostitutes. On the 25th of January 1986, he robbed a colleague's house in Miyazaki, threatening his wife with a kitchen knife and stealing 20,000 Japanese yen, or about $900 in 1986. Sentenced to prison for two years, his fiancée broke up with him. Disenfranchised, he left Miyazaki and never returned permanently, moving into his uncle's home in April 1989 in Hiroshima. He then became a taxi driver, earning an average monthly income of 300,000 yen, working two hours longer per day than other taxi drivers. This was about 1,330 US dollars per month. However, he felt extremely disenfranchised as a taxi driver and complained to customers that he was not supposed to be a taxi driver and that this was not the life he was supposed to live. He was a mixed bag as a taxi driver with difficulties interacting with colleagues, but also helped set up a baseball team at another taxi company. Colleagues noted that he changed his personality when he drank. Gradually, he began drinking excessively and seeing prostitutes, and ultimately became massively in debt. In 1991, he was introduced to a woman by his uncle, who he would eventually marry. However, his debts were now 5 million Japanese yen. A married man, he managed to pay it off and purchased a new house in Asanan Ward in 1992. His life seemed to improve and in April 1993 he had his first and only child, a daughter. However, two days after her birth, his wife developed mental illnesses and started making strange sounds. She was eventually hospitalized with his daughter moving in with his wife's parents. A broken Hidaka once again became an alcoholic and started seeing prostitutes. By the end of 1994, his debt amounted to 2 million Japanese yen and he was estranged from his daughter. By 1996, his debt had increased to 3.5 million Japanese yen or 24,137 US dollars and he had to pay back 150,000 Japanese yen per month. At this time, he started considering suicide and believed that his life insurance money could pay off his debt, but he did not have the courage to commit suicide. He then decided to kill sex workers to rob victims to pay off his debt. However, after his first few killings, he found 
that he enjoyed killing sex workers, and this also became a motivation for his killings. On the 18th of April 1996, driving his taxi, he drove to Shinenshi Park, known to be frequented by prostitutes. His victim was a prostitute and Enjo Kosai, the Japanese equivalent of a sugar baby, whereby older men give money or luxury gifts to attractive young women for sexual favours. Aged just 16, the girl lived in Kirita in Kurosei, Cho Kamo Gun, within the Hiroshima Prefecture, as a part time student at the Hiroshima Prefectural Hiro Senior High School. Inviting her into the taxi, he offered her 20,000 Japanese yen for sexual services. Hidaka drove to a convenience store and picked up a beer with the two of them drinking. Paying her 20,000 yen, the pair had sex, and she then demanded 120,000 Japanese yen. Driving into a dimly lit street in Kamai City, he stopped the taxi, having pressed the fuel changeover switch and told the victim that the taxi was broken down. He then went to check the engine before making his victim bend down, loosening his tie, creeping up behind her and strangling her to death. This occurred at 10.50pm. Stealing her 50,000 Japanese yen, he abandoned the body on a ditch road 10 minutes later. She was found 18 days later. He then drunk drove his taxi around and falsified a driving daily report and never used the 50,000 Japanese yen to pay off his increasing debts. Believing that he would never be caught, a brazen Hidaka decided to kill again in August 1996 with the aim of using the money stolen from prostitutes to pay off his spiralling debts. On the 12th of August 1996, in the evening, once again around Shinenchi Park, he found his victim paying her 30,000 Japanese yen. His victim was 23 years old and lived in Hiroshima, working in a snack bar and was a prostitute to supplement her income. After having sex on the morning of the 13th of August 1996, they stopped at a convenience store to buy some beer. He then drove up a mountain road. Stopping near Otagawa Bridge, he pressed the fuel selector switch and told the victim that the car had broken down and went to check the car's engine. Wearing his driving gloves, he then strangled the victim with a tie. Imploring for her life, she offered to return the 30,000 Japanese yen, which he had paid to have sex with her, but Hidaka strangled her to death. Robbing her of 52,000 Japanese yen, he abandoned her body on a slope along the Seki River in Kagoshi, Siraki Cho, Asakita Ku, at 2 a.m. on the 13th of August 1996. Her body was not found for a number of days. By late August, he began frequenting prostitutes again, and on the 30th of August 1996, he found his next victim, a 45-year-old woman from Ishaya City, Nagasaki, who had lived in an apartment in Takaramachi, Hiroshima, for the last 10 years. He already knew the victim, and had had sex with her in 1993 when she stole his money. However, his shift was almost over and he had to return to his taxi. On the 7th of September 1996, he was below his targeted fair income of 50,000 Japanese yen, having only reached 30,000 Japanese yen. To compensate, he decided to kill a prostitute. At 11pm, he offered 30,000 Japanese yen to have sex with a 45-year-old sex worker from is a higher city. However, he offered to have sex with this victim in his taxi, whereas of the rest of his victims, he had sex in a hotel. He then stopped at a convenience store for beer. At 11.50 p.m., once in Kake Town, he stopped his car and he planned to have sex with her anally. With his victim on all fours, he then strangled her to death, utilizing his tie without violent resistance. He then stole 82,000 Japanese yen in cash from his victim's wallet, abandoning her body on the left bank of the Takiyama River, 10 kilometers away from the murder site. His final victim was killed one week later. At 10 p.m. on the 13th of September 1996, he picked up a prostitute, a 32-year-old housewife who lived in an apartment with her two children and had married a Nigerian man, offering her 40,000 Japanese yen to have sex with him. 
At 10pm on the 13th of September 1996, he picked up a prostitute, a 32-year-old housewife who lived in an apartment with her two children and had married a Nigerian man, offering her 40,000 Japanese yen to have sex with him. Stopping at a convenience store to buy beer and snacks, he stopped near a dam in Saiki Ward where the two of them had sex. Heading towards Hatsukashi, at 2am, Hidaka once again pressed the fuel selector switch, as he had for his first and second victim, stalling the car. Taking his tie off, his victim felt that there was something wrong, opened the taxi door and fled. Fearing that he would be caught, Hidaka drove after her and eventually managed to get in front of her, leaped out of his taxi and grabbed her. Threatening her with an 11 centimeter knife, he forced her back into the taxi, assaulted her 10 times and then strangled her with his tie. He robbed the victim of 56,000 Japanese yen and her mobile phone. At 2.40am, he abandoned the body on a grass road in Kuzuhara in the small town of Yukicho. She was discovered five hours later. Witness testimony at the hotel where the pair had sex pointed to Hidaka and he was arrested on the 21st of September 1996. His third victim was the last to be discovered with her corpse found three and a half weeks after her death. Hidaka was arrested on the 14th of September 1996. Hidaka was sentenced to death on the 9th of February 2000 by the Hiroshima District Court. He spent his remaining years in the Hiroshima Detention Center. As a result of the murders, prostitution in Shintenchi Park plummeted and by 2000 it was rarely frequented by prostitutes. Additionally, the Hiroshima Taxi Association took significant heat and nighttime taxi usage plummeted, particularly amongst young women in Hiroshima. Hidaka did not appeal his death sentence and he was hanged to death on the 25th of December 2006 in Hiroshima. Thank you for watching. Please do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to inform you when new videos come out. Also, why not hit that like button and leave a nice comment. It helps more than you know and your support is truly appreciated. Until next time, stay awesome, stay classy, be kind to everyone you meet and have an amazing day.